Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. Uh, so I did promise some content that doesn't have something to do with that strong storm research, but I have one last little episode that I just had to share with you guys. Uh, now, before I start talking about that, for those of you who are not into self-hosting your own VPN, I have a lot of stuff coming for you guys. And I actually just purchased another computer so that I can eventually get into things such as showing you guys how to use Linux Tails and all kinds of other things that required a second computer. Uh, now I'm obsessed by 2015 MacBook Pros, more on this in a future episode, but all of that to say that I didn't forget you guys and we're gonna be back on track really shortly. Now before uh, getting there, um, today I wanna talk to you guys about kill switches. Uh, when using a VPN on your computer, uh, when you enable the VPN, well, at that point on, you won't be leaking your true IP address, either IPv4 or IPv4 and IPv6, um, depending on how your VPN server is configured. Now, um, what happens before that VPN is enabled? Well, what happens is a whole lot of things call home. Now, to mitigate that, to make sure that all the traffic is routed through the VPN, we need to use something called a kill switch. Now, a kill switch is essentially a firewall that will not allow traffic to the internet unless it is routed through the VPN. Now, some VPN apps, such as Malvad, have that baked in. Uh, but now, last episode was about self-hosting our own VPN. So what about that? How can we implement a kill switch uh, when self-hosting our own VPN? Well, the good news is, uh, there is a super amazing way of doing that on macOS using Packet Filter, which is the low-level firewall that ships with every Mac. Um, a lot of people have been challenging me on Mac not being a privacy-conscious operating system. I should be using Linux, stuff like that. And although you guys are right, I have to give some credit to Apple because this computer is actually running Unix behind the scenes. And there's a whole bunch of super powerful tools that we can configure and, and benefit from. So one of those is Packet Filter. Um, so I'm gonna switch to my screen here. Now, um, today's guide is gonna be about configuring Packet Filter to use it as a kill switch. Um, so without further ado, there's a few requirements. So for this to work, you need to have a virtual private network with a public IPv4 address, and you need to have a computer running macOS Mojave or Catalina this guide will not work on iOS and it is really uh, catered to macOS. So uh, as usual, a few caveats on how to copy paste uh, commands. So the first thing we wanna do is go into system preferences. Then we wanna go into security and privacy. Then uh, we wanna unlock this. Uh, now, as you guys know, my password on this demo computer is super shitty. Yours should be longer. Um, and we want to turn on the firewall. So right now it's already turned on. So if yours is, uh, if yours is on, uh, turn off firewall. This is very confusing. Anyways, essentially it's on, it's on, Jesus. Uh, then if we go in firewall options, we want to make sure that everything here is disabled. So this is disabled, this is disabled, this, and we want to enable stealth mode. So not only is this something I recommended in the episode on setting up macOS for privacy, but this actually behind the scenes turns on the packet filter firewall. So in order to conf uh, confirm that it is actually running, uh, we can run this little command here, enter our password and voila. Uh, we can see here that, you know, status enabled, so that's enabled. Now, the next thing we wanna do is uh, well, actually, before I do this, I'll just go a little more in detail here on YouTube. Um, this here is the default configuration of packet filter. So this happens in pf.conf. We want to overwrite all of this to really like uh, take control of that. So running this command here uh, will back up that configuration and overwrite it with our own local.pf configuration. The next thing we want to do is we want to see uh, what our uh, network hardware interfaces are. And I will have to mask my MAC addresses here, Jesus. But as you can see, this computer has a Wi-Fi, 
uh, network interface and a few Thunderbolt network interfaces. Uh, so this here, we're, we're gonna be needing in a moment, we're gonna be essentially enabling uh, the packet filter firewall on the uh, EN0 interface. The next thing we wanna do is get our subnet mask and determine what our <clears throat> subnet prefix is. So this here is uh, on the 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. So we can use a little table here and we can see that this is at slash 24. And uh, what that means is our subnet uh, prefix will be 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Uh, so this here is what we have. Uh, now this here, you guys want to make sure you configure it uh, the way you like. Uh, I, in this case, will only enable this for EN0. If you guys are doing tethering on your iPhone or are using external network interfaces, other uh, hardware network interfaces may be added here. And that's what I'm doing here. This here is adding uh, my Wi-Fi network interface, uh, Thunderbolt interface, and EN0, let me see what that is, and EN5, I mean, well, okay, so essentially it's adding my Wi-Fi network interface, my iPhone USB network interface, and my Thunderbolt Ethernet network interface. Whew, okay. Uh, so as I said, on this demo computer, we're just gonna do this for Wi-Fi, so that's enter, and then, whoops, and then uh, all of these here are pre-configured for this uh, network. So as I said, this here is my subnet prefix. Uh, this here, if I do if config, this is, oh, oh, actually, let me connect to my VPN. IPsec0, that is the uh, virtual network interface for the VPN. So essentially what I did run here, uh, configured a few environment variables, um, and then it's time to create the anchors. So PF uses something called anchors. It's kind of like an equivalent to IP table rule sets, uh, if you know what those are. So what's happening here is pretty interesting. It actually took me a bit of figuring out how, how, this, this, woo, how this stuff works. Um, so we're setting a few variables that are gonna be used throughout the rules, but what this anchor here is doing is it's disabling or blocking everything except DHCP and VPN requests. What that means is your computer will be allowed to connect to a network through Wi-Fi and it will be able to request an IP from a DHCP server. That's essential for this to work. Now, um, what that means also is uh, from that point on, your computer will be allowed to talk to the VPN server and send and receive traffic to and from that VPN server. That's it. So it's a super, super strict firewall that will only allow the computer to get an IP address and then to connect to the VPN server. Hence, this is a very powerful kill switch. Now this will totally wreck uh, the ability to connect to Wi-Fi captive portals such as Starbucks. Uh, so for this, there's a few convenience scripts later in today's episode that will allow us to disable this temporarily. Um, okay, so we just wanna take all of this block here and essentially paste it in the console and press enter. Uh, now, let me see. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, create a trusted anchor. Now, the trusted anchor is interesting because using the uh, strict anchor we just created, the computer will not be able to connect to printers on a local network. So for instance, I have a network printer here at home and when I'm in strict mode, I cannot even print on it. I cannot discover other peripherals on my network. I cannot even SSH into other systems on my network. So it's a super hardened uh, firewall, but sometimes we wanna be able to switch to a more trusted mode. So what trusted does here is it allows multicast DNS and local network requests. So essentially that will enable the computer to use Bonjour in order to detect network peripherals and it will allow us to SSH 
you know, to and from other devices on the network. So uh, all of this little block here, we want to copy it whoop, and paste it here, press enter. Now we want to create essentially a symlink that will symlink local.pf to strict. That symlink will allow us to switch from trusted to strict uh, using convenience uh, convenience scripts, which uh, we'll, we're going to be creating in a second. So once this is done, we want to go ahead and restart um, PF. And once this is done, if I disconnect from the VPN and I try going on a website, it is not going to work. So essentially, no traffic is allowed to and from the internet when the VPN is not connected because it essentially cannot be routed anywhere. It's destroyed by the, v, uh, the firewall. So if I go about connecting to my VPN here, you'll see that as soon as it's connected, we can look here, the website will load, boom. So that's the way for us to confirm that the kill switch is actually working. So uh, once this is done, we wanna go about creating a slash user slash local slash sbin. It's a folder in which the convenience scripts will be created. Uh, now we want to source that folder. So first we want to see what shell we're using. Uh, in the case of Catalina, it's ZHS, so Z shell by default. Uh, for Mojave, it was actually bash. So in this case, we're using Z shell. So we're going to run this. Um, now we're going to create a few convenience scripts. Now those are interesting. What they allow us to do using the sim link I mentioned earlier is to switch from one configuration to the other. The other thing that this can allow us to do is to block or unblock specific apps. So for instance, if you guys are using 1Password uh, and you're using local sync, well, local sync will not work in strict mode, but it will work in trusted mode. So again, uh, the way I like things, let me just show this to you guys. If I go in system preferences and I go into my firewall settings, again, super shitty password, demo computer, uh, you'll see that I tend to block everything by default. And if I was using 1Password on this computer, 1Password would be blocked as well. So that's a good thing to do. That's a good thing to do when you're in an internet cafe and stuff like this so that server uh, processes on your computer cannot be accessed by, you know, who knows. Now, the thing is, it would be nice if when we switch to trusted mode, well, this actually becomes allowed temporarily and that's exactly what those lines here are doing. So you would wanna uncomment them and link to specific apps. So this is an example for 1Password and Squid, which I use as a proxy when I'm developing stuff. This here is just uh, some sugar. So you'd wanna uncomment those tree lines. So all of this little block here, we're gonna run this here in the terminal and now we're going to create a trusted one. So as you can see, the same thing here is happening, but this here is on blocking those apps from the firewall. Okay. Now this here, last but not least, is used to disable the firewall. As I just mentioned earlier, if you're uh, using this kill switch and you want to connect to a Wi-Fi captive portal, for example, at Starbucks or at an airport, you're gonna to have to disable this because things won't work. There are ways to kind of mitigate that using application layer firewalls, but that might be the subject of a future episode. Uh, okay, now we're gonna go ahead and test our convenience scripts. So strict is super simple. It essentially enables strict mode, that's it. Uh, trusted is a little different. When we run this, it will enable trusted mode, but it will then wait for us to kill it and then it's gonna automatically go back to strict mode. And if the window is closed, it will also go back to strict mode. So it's designed as a temporary thing. And if we hit control C, it will go back to strict mode. And the last one is disabled. Disabled will disable this. So for instance, if I disconnect from the VPN and type test, I can now access this. Once I uh, press control C, if I try to reload this, it won't work. So I cannot navigate on the internet because now the kill switch is reinstated. Uh, so I'll switch back to my VPN here. Uh, now, uh, step number 16 is we wanna make sure that strict is uh, the default when we boot the computer. So we're creating a launch daemon here, which will make sure that strict.sh uh, runs at every boot. 
So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, now, there are here steps if you guys want to revert back to defaults. Uh, using a kill switch is an essential part of our privacy and security stack when using VPNs. So I really felt the need to share this with you guys as fast as possible because some of you may have followed the self-hosted VPN uh, guides, the strong swan guide, and this really, uh, I mean, I always use both together. So that's all I have for you today. I hope this was insightful. If you're new to the channel, smash that subscribe button. Uh, if you're not new to the channel, feel free to share this content with as many people as you want. Uh, privacy should be on everyone's mind. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.